Hi, I'm Ira Block, Sony Artisan of Imagery. In this video, you will learn about planning before you shoot, the key components of a photo, including light, composition, and moment, the Sony gear I use, high ISO and fast shutter speeds, and finally, social media and Wi-Fi, Before I head out somewhere, I research a place to try to learn about its culture. I want to come up with images that are deeper and more intimate than the normal tourist images. When I was first starting out in photography, getting information about a place meant going to libraries and looking through encyclopedias and books. And now, of course, it's simple. Just go online, you Google a place, you can see a lot of pictures of a place. When I look at pictures of a place that have already been shot, it gives me an idea of what the place looks like. But I'm very careful about not going out with too many pre-conceptual ideas about a place. Now with the Sony cameras, I'm able to get much more intimate pictures because they're small and people aren't intimidated by them. I'm able to get into more intimate situations and people don't freak out as they did when they see a large camera and big lenses. The small Sony mirrorless cameras have been really terrific for me in my shooting. I'm able to be much more unobtrusive and be sort of stealth when I'm moving around. Even with these incredible cameras, you have to spend time thinking about what you're shooting. You have to look for images. You just can't point and shoot. You have to think and shoot before you take a great picture. And doing this takes experience, practice. So taking more pictures and making more mistakes really help you grow as a photographer. Let's take a look at how I see and find images, how I convey information and tell a story about a place or a culture. The key components in making any photo are light, composition, and moment. Usually, I'm attracted to light. That catches my eye and that begins to get the process going. Once I find the light, I then stay with the situation and I keep shooting and I wait for some special moment to happen. In this picture, I saw some great light from the monks walking around holding candles, and I started shooting. I got really lucky. I saw a monk pick up his phone and do a selfie of himself. It helps tell the story. Here I have some monks in Laos who were in an ancient city, and they're walking around with cell phones. It shows a juxtaposition of culture. I was photographing these kids playing baseball in central Havana, and the light was really getting nice. I could see these great long shadows, and I thought, this may look good from a higher angle. So I talked my way into somebody's apartment, got on their terrace, and bent over to shoot this photo through all the laundry that was hanging out to dry. And it was terrific. Wow, I'm looking at the shadows and I'm just shooting. I'm waiting for everyone's shadow to be just right so you could see the separation of the bat in the kid's hand in the shadow. I found I had one image where the ball, the white baseball, was going through a dark shadow. So not only did I have the great shadows of the kids, I actually have the ball in this picture. So it really, really just worked out perfectly. My always on the camera lens is the 24 to 70. It's a great focal length. I could do those wide shots or I could zoom to 70 and get some closer in shots of people. But there are times when I've got to switch to a longer lens so I go right to the 70 to 200. And I was shooting at a night game with the 70 to 200 and I wanted to cover the action. To do this, to capture the action and to freeze it, I had to use a high shutter speed, and because the stadium is not so well lit, I had to boost my ISO up to about 5,000. And with these Sony cameras, 5,000 is a piece of cake. 
I really like shooting in low light, moody light, and at night. And that's when I do need the high ISO. When I'm shooting at night, I like to use prime lenses with big apertures. My favorites, the 55 1.8 and the 28 f2. In my early career when I was shooting with film, ISO 200, 400 was the max I could get for transparency film. Now, 200 to 400, that's my starting point. And here's an incredible example. I'm in Morocco and I'm shooting at ISO, let me get this right, 51,200. And this was the 55-1.8 lens and I was probably shooting 125th and yet the look of the image is terrific. The woman's skin tone is just incredible. It really held detail in her skin and as far as the noise, well, the noise here looks like grain when I used to shoot Tri-X film and push it a little bit. So it doesn't have the feel of noise. It has a feel of, you know, film grain. And it just is, you know, phenomenal. And if you look carefully, you'll see a guy in the background trying to do a picture on his phone. And I'm sure his image is not coming out. I was out in the desert staying in a tent and some of the locals came out and started playing music. This was made totally by candlelight. And again, ISO 51,200. 55 millimeter 1.8 lens, 125th of a second at 1.8. Besides the fact that the noise, the grain is not bad, is the fact that the dynamic range, you're seeing detail in places that you'd be surprised to find detail. The other advantage to the Sony cameras in the high ISO is that I could shoot in early morning light and here I'm on a boat in Inlay Lake in Myanmar and on a boat you need a fairly good shutter speed at 2 50th of a second. Now my ISO isn't high here, it's probably 5,000 or 6,400. What helped me a lot was the fire, the, you know, I have this nice blue tone and the fisherman is sort of framed a bit by the mountain range in the back that's blue and the water that's blue. And I've got this golden light coming off the fire. And he's got great body language. Really helps the picture. So this all came together because I could shoot at 5,000 ISO on this image. These monks in Bhutan were praying in a dark temple and there was some light coming through the window and it was bouncing off this bright colored floor back onto the faces. Again, I was at 5,000 ISO and I was able to make a picture in a situation that I wouldn't have been able to do 15 years ago, maybe even 10 years ago. In Myanmar, we were out on the street and this girl was selling some jewelry and I just love the paint on her face. It's called Tanaka. And she was lit with the flashlights in camera phones. I'm shooting her again, 5,000 ISO. And here's a moment. I waited and waited till she turned her eyes up and smiled. And I got the moment. We're back in Cuba, back to Cuban baseball. At a night game, I was shooting a fan in the stands and it was really dark and I needed again to shoot at a reasonable shutter speed, a 250th of a second, because he's moving around, and I'm able to do it. When I start a story, I don't want to be all over the place. I like to have some sort of theme. One of the things I've just finished doing was a project on baseball in Cuba and the importance of baseball to Cuba's culture. As part of the cultural extent of baseball, I thought getting some older players would sort of round the whole thing out. And I went out to start shooting and I was going to shoot the action, but the faces and these guys were so terrific and their uniforms were all so different. I thought this is a natural to make portraits. 
on this Veterans League, there was a 50-year-old woman playing with the, all the guys, and she was just an incredible player, and she's playing catcher for them, and I loved all the catcher's equipment she had, so she was the first one I photographed. I found a nice wall, my background, but I wanted a little more pop in these pictures, so I brought my big strobe and umbrella to light them a little bit, just to give a little more sharpness to the image and to really pop the colors out. In the past, my relationship was with photo editors, editors of magazines. There was a lot of layers between what I initially shot and what eventually gets published. Social media, it's very direct. I'm hearing from people. I find out what they like, what they don't like. I post a picture on social media and I see what affects them. I see how my photographs are doing out there in the world. People come back to me. It's the new way that I communicate. It's extraordinary. Traveling around the world, I could be anywhere, take an image with my Sony camera, turn the Wi-Fi on, send that image to my cell phone, and from my cell phone, it goes anywhere I want. I try not to do trivial photos on my social media accounts. I'm a photographer and I'm a storyteller, so my social media needs to reflect that. In this video, you learned about planning before you shoot, the key components of a photo including light, composition, and moment, you also learned about the Sony gear I use, high ISO and fast shutter speeds, and finally, social media and Wi-Fi. Keep all this in mind, keep practicing, and you'll take better pictures.